the smile happy. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Vancouver Aquarium today for our Northern Spotlights talk show, uh, bringing you a little bit closer to the north up in the Arctic. I'm your host. My name is Amanda, and today we are joined by Eric Solomon, who is the director of Arctic programs here at the Vancouver Aquarium. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eric. That's great to be here. Excellent. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't know, Eric has traveled multiple times to the Arctic. He can be descri described as a researcher and an educator, an adventurer, and a photographer even. So can you tell us a little bit about how you even started getting involved working in the Arctic? Uh, I got lucky. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, as part of my job here at the aquarium, had the opportunity to go up to the north uh, and visited a place called Pond Inlet mm. and really fell in love with the Arctic. And then we had the opportunity to really get involved more directly with the Arctic, engaged more in doing different things, more research, more education programs, mm -hmm. community programs. And I jumped at the opportunity and been doing that for the last six years or so. That's wonderful. But when you started at the aquarium, what were you doing before that? I had a much broader portfolio. So I had lots of conservation, education and mm -hmm. research, uh, all, all sort of all those portfolios. Mm -hmm. and. Um, was fortunate to be able to set those aside and really dive into the Arctic. So what has surprised you most since uh, you know, focusing more on the Arctic and that work? I think learning more about the Arctic itself and what, what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. um, I think like most people, before I visited the Arctic the first time, I had this image of what the Arctic was. Um, and what I began to realize is the Arctic is people, it's wildlife, it's mm -hmm. environment, it's all, all of those things wrapped together. And um, I think that was one of the things that was most surprising to me was it wasn't just this big, white, desolate, frozen land. Yeah. <laughs> and I think for many people, that's kind of what they think of. They don't really realize maybe what's up there. So um, what was your first experience like up in the Arctic? Uh, well, my first experience was during the summer. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I was surprised by all the wildflowers and things like that, that, that I didn't realize back then. I didn't realize there were, you know, such color and such beauty up there mm -hmm. that way. Um, and uh, I spent time in the community of Pond Inlet, met a lot of really great people, people I've been in touch with uh, on a regular basis ever since and been working with quite closely on various programs as well. That's really wonderful. So how many communities um, are you in touch with up in the Arctic? Oh my, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, we have four partnerships with communities. Mm -hmm. So four different communities like Kalukduk and Joy Haven and Cambridge Bay. Um, and uh, let's see, what's, what did I say? Kalukduk, Cambridge Bay, Joe Haven. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've got four regular partnerships, plus we've got various other um, various other communities we work with, Pangertung, mm -hmm. um, Pond Inlet yep. as well. Absolutely. So um, when you are up in the Arctic, is it all research, all work all the time? Do you have opportunities for some fun as well? Oh, I, I make sure I have opportunities for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of things do you do up there have um, for fun? Well, last, last time uh, I was in Joy Haven, mm -hmm. um, we had the opportunity actually to host a community feast mm. and a dance. And uh, that was actually a lot of fun and, and um, spent, spent a great afternoon and evening with the community that way. Yeah. Um, there are times when I get to go out on the ice and, and you know, even though I, I may be doing research, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Can you describe what uh, was included in the feast? Oh, we had caribou. We had Arctic char. Mm -hmm. um, there was... Uh, those were the main country foods. Mm -hmm. um, then somebody made chili with muskox. Cool. So, yeah. yeah, it's not really something we have here in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. <laughs> not your common, no. No. <laughs> so we actually have a question from home about uh, the types of food. Uh, Lewis from Victoria, BC wants to know, what's the coolest Arctic food that you have eaten? Coolest? Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how you define cool. <laughs> I've had frozen Arctic food before, and that was pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> um, that was actually beluga. Okay. Any others? But, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of what's called the country foods, the, the foods that, that people rely on in the north for their nutrition. So uh, beluga, narwhal, muskox, 
caribou, char. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, those foods are really important to people who live in the north because mm -hmm. getting good nutrition is really difficult. Um, so hunting is a, is a really important part of life in the north. Absolutely. And um, so uh, have the opportunity to eat those foods when I'm, in, when I'm up there. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite of those, of those that you've tried? Uh, caribou stew is pretty if you have one. Narwhal? <laughs> Narwhal? Why was that? Uh, well, for me, it was uh, chewy and fishy. Okay. It just wasn't my kind of thing. But I if you grow up with it, I'm sure it's great. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. <laughs> so um, as far as other animal interactions, encounters that you've had, um, are there other, you know, can you tell us about some of those? Well, sure. I mean, I, I've been fortunate to see lots of polar bears mm -hmm. and snowy owl and caribou and muskox and lots of different animals. Um, spent a lot of time with an Arctic fox one afternoon and, mm -hmm. and evening, um, taking lots of pictures. We might have a, I think, do we have a picture? Yes, of I believe we do have a photo of that Arctic fox, okay. um, but uh, oh, I is. believe there's a story behind this Arctic fox as well? Well, there is in this case, yeah. yeah. Um, we had spent, uh, this was, picture was probably taken at about one o'clock in the morning because it was summer, so it was light. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd probably been with this fox for three or more hours and getting more and more comfortable and she was getting more and more comfortable with us and so as a photographer you start with your long lens farther away and you and you shed your lenses and get your shorter and shorter lenses as you get closer and and so I had been doing that over those three hours and we got lots of great pictures and spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with this fox um, then uh, probably around 1 30 2 o'clock in the morning um, she got up after all of this photography, she got up, she walked over to one of my longer lenses that I had shed, left there, and she sniffs it, she licked it, she tried to bite it, then she peed on it. Oh no! Oh yeah, she peed on it, and then looked at me, turned around, and left. And that, and that was, I guess, her way of saying, thanks very much, I had a great time, uh, enjoy the pictures. I'm out of here. Wow, so. that is a, a very a unique encounter, I guess I would say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you still have that lens? I do. You do? I do. <laughs> That's uh, definitely a really interesting talking piece. Where do you have it at home on display somewhere? No, I use it still. <laughs> oh, you use it still. <laughs> I well, cleaned it off <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't smell so much anymore. Well, what is your relationship with Arctic foxes today? If you photograph them, do you, are you wary? Do you stay away? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I've been back to that same den um, a couple years now and taken pictures of, of what may have been her offspring. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, pretty wonderful, and as you can see in the audience here, it's a really great photo that you're able to capture of that encounter and a wonderful memory that you can have with you always. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in addition, of course, to uh, you know, having fun um, and getting these great encounters with these animals, of course, you're talking before about um, your work with the, the communities there. Um, how much would you say the work that you do up there is um, engaging with communities versus like research work? Probably 80% is, is engaging with communities. Um, working on various kinds of projects and programs. We have a program called the Carvic Barriers to Bridges and it's about uh, working with the communities to understand the relationships between uh, Inuit traditional knowledge and science and mm -hmm. how the two can work together really effectively to solve environmental issues that, are, that the communities are facing. Mm. Um, so we do workshops and, and uh, we work with these various communities and people within those communities. Um, so I spend probably 80% of my time on that. And that's important because at the aquarium, when we're working in the Arctic, we don't uh, do anything that we're not invited to do mm. in the Arctic and we don't do anything without Arctic partners. And so for me, it means uh, taking the time to build the relationships in these communities and, and you know, things like Having a community feast and a dance, you know, are, are great opportunities to, to get to know the community better and mm -hmm. get the community to know me better and these kinds of things too. Absolutely. So it's not all just fun. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, definitely engaging with communities would be a, a really big part. Um, do you have any plans to go to other communities or have you heard of any others that are interested in working with the aquarium? Sure. Um, we're, we're always... We try and work with a, a new community each year that we haven't had a chance to work with in the past mm -hmm. um, to, to make sure that we're getting to know the North as much as possible. It's important for us because 
we're down here talking about the Arctic, and it's so important that we're doing it with a northern perspective and, and with, uh, with a, a real understanding of the, the issues and these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be back up in uh, Kuluktuk next month. Um, and uh, we'll be doing workshops on traditional knowledge and, and science, uh, working with youth mm -hmm. on that, and then working with the broader community as well. And the youth will present kind of what they've learned to the rest of the community. So That's really great. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, and then how has like the Inuit knowledge shaped you know, the work that you do with your research? I believe we have a, a research photo with us that you have provided. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, well, we do, the, the research that we do, we do various kinds of research. So we have uh, beluga vo vocalization mm -hmm. and, and uh, research that, that Dr. Valeri Vergara does, for example. The work that I'm doing is oceanographic work and it's looking at temperature and salinity and dissolved oxygen, these various physical factors mm -hmm. that, that um, while they seem like they may be just boring physical factors about the ocean, they're the things that ultimately decide who gets to live where. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so uh, Inuit knowledge is really important even for that kind of work. Um, it, it, the simplest way to put it would be it's what's kept me alive out there mm. on the ice. Um, the, the understanding of the ice itself and, and how to be safe, um, where to go, where not to go, these mm. kinds of things. But, but also um, helping to inform where the right place is for us to do the sciences in the first place. You know, well, we see a lot of animals over here, and we don't see a lot of animals over there, and these kinds of things that that Inuit traditional knowledge brings to this um, that we we couldn't have or couldn't do otherwise. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Now I have a, a question for the audience because we're getting a really great picture of you know what the Arctic is like and the people there, the communities, and, and what we're learning. Would anyone here now like to go up to the Arctic and kind of see it for yourself? Yeah, there's a lot of hands. I think it sounds like a pretty uh, amazing place and uh, really lucky that you get to go up there and you know, build those relationships. So um, what's next for you with your research? Um, well, we'll continue to do the research that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some new projects as well that are, that are tracking ice, monitoring and measuring and, and uh, getting a better understanding of sea ice around the community of Pond Inlet for, mm -hmm. for their safety. Um, it's changing and it's changing mm -hmm. quickly. And so the communities are, are very concerned about that and about their own safety while they're out on the ice. Mm -hmm. um, so from a research standpoint, we'll be engaging in that project coming up throughout this next year. Um, I'll be up in uh, Kuluktuk next month. Um, and then we're going to be, we're, we're working with each of these communities to identify um, important issues that they're facing, mm -hmm. uh, environmental issues that they're facing. And, and then we'll work with those communities to help to develop traditional knowledge and science projects to address those as well. Mm -hmm. So throughout the next year, we'll be working on developing new research projects in each of those communities with those communities. And for anyone that's coming to the Vancouver Aquarium, are there any opportunities coming up to maybe meet some and these uh, people from the local communities? Sure. Uh, well, we're focusing on the Arctic all fall, yep. this entire fall, um, with all kinds of great things going on. Um, this is part of that. Uh, we do have um, a gentleman from Pangertung coming in November. Mm -hmm. um, he's a printmaker and a carver. He's going to be mm -hmm. doing his printmaking here in the gallery. Um, awesome. People have the opportunity actually to try their hand at it as well and uh, he'll also be there to talk about what life in Pangertung is like mm -hmm. for him and for others uh, so it'll be a great opportunity to, to meet some folks and, mm -hmm. and um, we're always trying to bring people down from the north as much as possible to help bring that northern perspective into, uh, into what we're doing. That's wonderful. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And uh, I do want to thank you so much for joining us here for this Northern Spotlights talk show. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, it's been a lot of really great information. And thanks to those of you in our audience that have joined us. And uh, if you would like to learn more about the Vancouver Aquarium's Arctic commitments, please check our website, vanaqua.org slash Our North. You can find out a lot of really great information there. And if you want to tune in to our next show, it'll be happening next Saturday at 1230 Pacific Standard time and it's going to be with Valeria Vergara who you actually mentioned right. she's a beluga researcher here at the Vancouver Aquarium so thank you so much again my name's Amanda and uh, have a wonderful day thanks so much again Eric thanks